Hello guys, today we're gonna do finally the tier list for all the heroes in Battle for Middle-earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King, but important to mention is the fact that the list is gonna be based on my personal opinion, so you are 100% welcome to disagree with me, indeed I would love to read your opinions guys in the comment section down below, and also, this is not gonna be a power ranking, because power ranking is obvious in Rise of the Witch King, the most expensive heroes are always the most powerful heroes, but the list is gonna be based much more about how impactful they are, how cost efficient these heroes are, but also how often do we see them in actual tournament games, competitive games, in professional games. Anyways, let's get it started. So we're gonna start with Aragorn, Araton's son, the king of Men of the West. He's very, very powerful, but also very expensive. Uh, Men of the West is kinda in a, in a bad spot right now in the current patch, so we don't see many, many Men of the West players, and if we do, Aragorn is a hero we don't normally see that often. But I still feel like he's very powerful, has a great scaling with the Army of the Dead summon with level 10. Blade Master is very powerful as well. He's gonna make him almost the strongest 1v1 hero in the game. Atelas for the self sustain to heal allied units around him. Elendil to actually have some CC crowd control on the enemy units. But also the leadership is very, very powerful. But he's not gonna be in the S tier. I'm gonna put him actually in the E tier, guys. Next on the list is a hero we see more and more often in the last weeks and months. And, you know, next to Ar Aragorn, uh, his wife, Arvin, um, is, a, is a Alvin hero from the Alvin faction. He's a very cost-efficient hero. I mean, she costs less than, you know, some normal units actually in the game. As also Atelas, uh, the flat ability can be very useful, guys. She's very squishy, though, so she's not about to deal damage to the enemy units, but has some great spells with the flat. Uh, because of the low price, I'm gonna put her actually in the B list, so right below her husband. <laughs> Azok on the list is a hero from the Goblin faction. Azok, I would say, is probably the most seen uh, Goblin hero from the Goblin faction, guys. Very cost-efficient hero, has great abilities, battle rage for the 1v1 potential against other heroes, has the pillage ability, which means you will get money every time you kill enemy units, as long as Azok is around you. And I would say he is probably the most cost efficient and the best, best hero from the Goblin faction. So we're gonna have the first hero in the S list. Next on the list is Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is a hero you are not able to recruit from the fortress, from any faction, but you are able to summon Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is, by the way, in my opinion, an anti hero, guys. He's great against other heroes because he can knock them down all the time. And has Sonic Song, which is similar to the Wizard Blast from Gandalf and Saruman. Very, very powerful. Uh, has a great Wombo combo potential with Horn of Gonzo, for example, with Cloud Break, with any stunning ability, because then you can go for a beautiful Sonic Song ability. But you have to invest 10 power points for him, so you, most of the time you have better choices. We're gonna put him actually in the B list. Next on the list is a hero we see. We were able to see, you know, many more times in the version 7, in the in the current patch 2.02 version 8.4, we don't get to see Boromir that often anymore. I would still say he is one of the most reliable heroes from the Men of the West faction. Cost efficient, has Horn of Gondor, which is great, uh, can stun the enemy units, um, has Captain of Gondor to give experience, has also leadership in his kit, um, knockback with his passive, so he's pretty powerful hero. You're gonna put him in the E list right after Aragorn. Next on the list is King Brent from the Dwarven faction, is the most seen Dwarven hero in the game. Uh, very powerful, again some factions with the Beast Slayer arrow you can actually one shot ants for example, one shot eagles and monsters. The Slam Shot is a very powerful ability as well, very cost efficient hero, I'm gonna put him actually in the S tier list. Next on the list is a hero I would love to see more often, King Dean. King Zane is also a very powerful hero, but he is pretty expensive. He's like a like a very sportive hero. Has leadership, has uh, you know fear resistant with the stubborn pride. Has double buff in his kit because of the leadership and the mighty rage. And once you are, uh, I believe level uh, seven, you can also summon the royal guard, which are very very powerful units. However, a hero we don't normally see that often because he's very expensive. I'm gonna put him unfortunately in the C list. Next on the list is the Dragon Lord himself, the most expensive hero from the Goblin faction. Very powerful, the best flying hero in the game actually, in my opinion. You, you can cast Fireball from a safe distance, Wing Blast is very powerful as well. Hmm. 
But again, he's very, very expensive. We don't get to see him very often. And I think he's also easy to be countered. Like with extrovers or strong archers, you can actually shut him down completely. He will never be useless, however, because you can always use him for map control fights. And again, Fireball is a range ability. So you can use it from a safe distance over and over again. But the, the price is very high. And that's why it's very, very tough to collect that much money and get him on the field. Because of that reason, I'm going to put him also in the C-list right next to the King Dane. Next on the list is Elrond, similar to King Dane. It's a sportive hero, Atelas, foresight, leadership. The whirlwind is very powerful. The, the restoration can be very powerful as well. Uh, but also very expensive hero. That's why he's going to be also in the C. Next on the list is a hero, I think the most seen hero from the Men of the West faction. His name is Eomir. The Horse Lords of Men of Rohan has uh, level 1 leadership, has outlaw leadership, which means you will get money whenever you kill units or uh, buildings when, when Aomi is around. Uh, is a great hero to counter some calf units like Rohirrim, Gondor Knights, but also Spider Riders. Uh, you can, you know, reliable hero, cost efficient hero. He's gonna be, in my opinion, the most efficient hero from the Men of the West faction. That's why he's gonna be in the S list. Next on the list is his sister, Eowyn. Eowyn is a situational hero in my opinion. Uh, she can be very good with the smite against Thralmaster units, for example, from the Angmar faction. She can be also a great counter to Mordor because of her smite ability. But other than that, I would say Eowyn is overall a much, much better choice. Theoden is also a much better choice than Eowyn. And I'm, I'm sorry, Eowyn, but you're gonna be in the D-list. <laughs> sorry for that. Next on the list is another hero from the Man of the West faction, and his name is Faramir, the captain of Gonza, the brother of Boromir. I would say, in compared to Boromir, he's less useful. The bonding arrow is nice to slow down the enemy units or heroes. But other than that, I would say, uh, if you have the money, you will always go for Boromir or other heroes. You would not see Faramir that often. That's why he's gonna be next to his own wife, Eowyn. Next on the list are the two Felbys from the Moro faction. Camille and Morgomir. They are actually quite cost efficient because flyers for 3000 resources, I feel like that's a good thing. Uh, very powerful uh, heroes, you can also get dismounted with them, obviously. Um, they fall off big time in the mid to late game. They are very powerful early on until your opponent gets to some, you know, get some units on the field to counter them. But because they are flyers and they cost only 3000 each, I'm gonna put them in the B list. Beautiful. Next on the list is the Fire Drake from the Goblin Faction. Uh, this is the special effect from the Goblin Faction from the Fortress. Also very situational hero, I would say. He does massive amount of damage. He's a, he's a building destroyer, guys. He's very powerful, has the area damage. He can hit multiple units at once. But he's very squishy on the other side. Dies very, very fast to pretty much everything. To archers especially. So situationally, he can be a great choice. However... Um, I feel like he is also very easy to be taken down. That's why he's gonna be in the C-list. Next on the list is the Giant Eagle from the Elven Faction. The same here also for the Elven Faction. You can recruit him from the Fortress. With the Eagle Nest upgrade. A powerful hero with the Wing Blast. Uh, similar to, um, to the Drogoth, the Dragon Lord from the Goblin Faction. Uh, you can use him for map control fights. You can force your opponent to make multiple extrovers or arches to deal with him. Um, I would say he's one of the better summons from the Fortress guys. He's gonna be slightly more useful than this dude in my opinion, so we're gonna put him in the B list. Next on the list is my favorite hero of all time, Gandalf himself. Unfortunately, I won't be able to put Gandalf anywhere close to the S list because he's very expensive. Uh, has a really weak early game with only one ability being available with the Wizard Blast. You need at least level 4 before you can be useful with this guy. So, in order to be useful with Gandalf, you have to, you have to first of all invest 4000 resources to recruit him. Then you also have to level him up. And that sounds all too much work and we have not seen Gandalf many many times. I was now, I mean, I'm making now content for Rise of the Witch King in the past two and a half years. And I think I was able to see Gandalf maybe three or four times so far. That shows me that he's not reliable enough, unfortunately. Gandalf, my dude, my wizard, you're gonna be in the C-list. Beautiful. Next on the list is gonna be the Gloin's son Gimli. 
one of the fellowship members in the Lord of the Rings. Very, very powerful hero, guys, with the Slayer. You can actually chase down every other hero and one-shot them pretty much. Reliable hero. Remember, the Dwarven faction has only uh, four heroes, guys. King Brand, Klein, Gimli, and also uh, King Dean. And Gimli is very tanky against archers. Leap attack can be very nice. Uh, but also very expensive hero, costs 3000 resources, so it's hard to get him on the field. But once you get him on the field, he's gonna be, I think, more useful than Aragorn. And uh, that's why we're gonna put him in the A-list, but in front of Aragorn, actually. Next on the list is Gloin. Gloin is a very powerful hero as well, especially against buildings. I mean, he has a similar ability to King Brand, but in a melee form, the slam shot. Here you have the slam ability, which will also deal damage to buildings, but also to units. Uh, it's an area of effect damage, it can hit multiple units at once. The Shake Foundation can one-shot most of the buildings. And the Shatter Hammer means that he has a great scaling into the late game as well. We're gonna put him next to his son, Gimli. Next on the list is uh, Glorfindel. If this would be the patch 2.02 version 8.0, he would be definitely in the S-list with the Blade of Purity. He was able to boost his damage and armor by 100% each. Now he got nerfed though. That means armor now only gives you 50% increased uh, armor with the Blade of Purity. That means he's still vulnerable. Even with the Blade of Purity, you can still take him down. That's why we're gonna put him in the A-list. But he's gonna be the leader of the A-list so far. Next on the list is a hero I would love to see more often as well. Uh, Gorkil the Goblin King. One of the most powerful uh, goblin heroes in the game, but a very expensive one. He's similar to Elrond or to King Dane. He's being a very sportive hero with double leadership. You have the Skull Totem, which can also give you Fear Resistant. You can summon three Fire Drakes under your control once you are level 10. Uh, so he has a great scaling into the mid to late game as well. The Poison Stinger can deal damage to enemy heroes. I would say he's more useful than King Dane, but he's not gonna be... Actually, we can put him maybe in the B list. Let's do that. Next on the list is Gothmog, a hero we see, you know, many, many times from the Moro faction. Gothmog is like Eomir from the Men of the West faction because he has exclusive leadership to Orcs, Orc Archers, Orcs, but also Black Orcs. Uh, he has Fury, which is similar to the ability from Lourdes, the Carnage. So he's a great 1v1 hero, cost efficient hero. Can also give you Fear Resistant, which can be very nice in some matchups. And yeah, I would say he's gonna be also in the S list. Next on the list is Haldir. Uh, I think the most seen Elvin hero in the game. Boss Efficient is one of my favorite heroes actually because I feel like a hero that can give you leadership, that can fight with sword and bow, and that has a great scaling into the late game with the Golden Arrow, which is something like a small version of the Cloud Break, being able to stun all the enemy units. I think he's very useful hero uh, that costs almost nothing. He's gonna be also in the S list. Next on the list is Waldo from the Angmar faction. Waldo is also the most seen hero from the Angma faction, definitely a reliable hero that can summon reinforcements with the summon hillman ability. We have the pillage ability as well. We have also the leadership for Realm Masters exclusively. But remember early on or in the mid game as well, you are only fighting with Realm Master units, so that doesn't affect you that much. He's definitely the most useful hero from the Angma faction, that's why he's gonna be also in the S list. Next on the, lit, uh, next on the list is Karsh, another hero from the Angma faction. A very situational hero, I think he's a great hero against goblins. But other than that, I think he's very squishy. Doesn't have a great skilling either, and um, he's not gonna be anywhere close to the A or S list. We're gonna put him actually in the C list so far. Now we have another member of the Fellowship, Legolas, the Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. Um, very powerful hero, super long range, attacking very fast. A reliable hero as well, but same like to Gimli, he's very expensive. And if I have to be honest with you guys, I feel like Gimli is more useful because of the destruction power against buildings as well. So I can't put Legolas up in the A list, but he's gonna be in the B list for sure. But actually he's gonna be the leader of the B list so far. Next on the list is Lords. I mean, what can I say about Lords? I can't say anything bad about this hero. He is 100% the most cost efficient hero in the game. Low price, leadership, carnage, Village, like what else do you want? And if this is not enough, you have also a cripple ability, which can literally disable the enemy heroes or enemy hero for several seconds. That's gonna give you enough time to draw your sword, go in the melee range and use carnage and take him down. So he's 
definitely the leader of the S-list. I think every one of you guys will agree with me on that one. A very reliable hero, a hero we will almost see in every single matchup. And yeah, I love him. <laughs> Next on the list is Morgomir from the Angmar faction, a hero with the debuff. Um, that can also be situationally a great and reliable hero. But a hero we would we don't normally see that often, I gotta be honest with you guys. Uh, but I feel like he's, you know, kinda underrated. I think he's very reliable and we're gonna put him in the E-list. Next on the list is Mouth of Sauron, a hero from the Moto faction. Mouth of Sauron is actually a great hero when you think about it. Like, we have the uh, level 4 active debuff that can nullify the enemy leadership. You have Evil Eye, that's gonna be something like to, to the Easter Light from Gandalf. And yeah, he's a, he has a great scaling as well. He's a great counter to enemy Gondonites or Rohirrim. You can chase them down all the time. So I think he's reliable. We're gonna actually put him in the A-list. Next on the list is, uh, is are the Black Riders from the Moto faction. I mean, these are the, uh, the mini heroes, if you want to say so. Uh, and they are the best and the strongest mini heroes in the game. Great counter to the heroes. They cost 2,000 each though. And in order to recruit them, you need to... First of all, upgrade your uh, Siege Warriors to level 3, which is gonna cost you a lot of money and time. But once you get them on the field, they are very li reliable. They can 1v1 almost every other hero. I mean, they are also the strongest calf units in the game, if you want to say so. They're gonna be definitely in the E-list. But because of the investment you have to do to recruit them and get them on the field, they won't make it into the S-list, guys. Next on the list is Rogash, the Troll of, North, of the North. Uh, very powerful hero, I think he's similar to Gimli because of the leap attack. But uh, I feel like he's very slow, has a low attack damage until he unlocks the Rage of North, which is gonna boost his damage similar to the Blade of um, similar to the Blade Master from Aragorn. Um, very expensive hero as well. Uh, he is if I have to make a choice between Gimli and Rogash, I would always go for Gimli instead. That's why he's gonna be in the B list. Next on the list is Saruman. One of the few heroes from Isengard. Remember, Isengard is the one faction with like the least heroes, actually. Uh, Saruman is similar to Gandalf. He's cheaper than Gandalf. And I think in most situations, he's also more reliable than, Gan than Gandalf. The fireball is very nice with level 2. You can actually use it over and over again from a safe distance. Um, we're gonna put him definitely in the A-list. And he can change the outcome of the game. And Isengard has a stronger eco generally, because of the... You know, Devastation, Industry, Field of Fires, so you have much more money boost than Men of the Westerns. That's why we will see also Saruman much more often on the field uh, than the Gandalf from the Men of the West faction. Next on the list is an anti-Elvin hero. Sharko is his name with his splash damage. He's a legend, guys. I love him so much. And yeah, I think he's gonna be in the S-list just because of his passive with the splash damage. You are great uh, as a mounted hero. You have the you have the many ability with level seven, which can regenerate your HP from zero to hundred percent again. Can boost your damage and armor as well. You have work leadership just like Elmer does. Uh, when Elmer is in the there in there, I think uh, Sharku has to be in there as well. One of the most important, more, most impactful heroes in the game for sure. Next on the list is a Shelob, guys, a hero from the Goblin faction. Uh, I have, I'm gotta be honest, but he, she's gonna be in the wars list because I have not seen her one time in the last one year. Um, I feel like she's very expensive, but not that tanky. The only good thing about her is that she can trample uh, down the enemy units, but also, you know, move over the mountains and seas. And she has a tunnel, which is gonna give her a lot of mobility. But on the other side, the Goblin faction is mobile generally. So I think she's not as strong as she could as she could be. Next on the list is Theorin, uh, the king of Rohan. A very reliable hero, has level 1 leadership, which is unlike from Eomir, not only exclusive for Rohirrim or Gondonites, but it can give leadership to every single unit. A Glorious Charge is the best buff for the, for the Gondonites and Rohirrim, can make them almost invincible. It's gonna be definitely in the, in the S-list in my opinion. And next on the list is Tranduil, the daddy of Legolas, a very powerful hero, just like his son. They cost the same money. Uh, situationally, I think Tranduil is going to be a better choice than Legolas will be. So we won't uh, leave Legolas without his daddy and put him actually next to Legolas. 
Next on the list is Treebeard, a hero from the Men of the West, uh, from the Alvin faction you can recruit from the end mode. Uh, one of the best siege weapons in the game, tanky, can regenerate and give leadership to the allied ends around him. And uh, is the only uh, siege hero in the game actually, if we don't consider Gloin as a siege hero. So he's gonna be in this C list, uh, just because I think the other hero is gonna be uh, in many more situations more useful. I mean, Treebeard, you will only see him on the field when you wanna siege your opponent. He's not being a great hero to 1v1 other heroes. Next on the list is the Witch King from Engma. I mean, we're gonna put them both together because they are very similar to each other. The only difference is the Witch King from the Mordor faction is on his Felbeast and the Witch King from Engma is on his horse. Um, they, they are also very expensive units or heroes, but unlike uh, unlike uh, Dragon Lord Drogov, I think they are more useful because of the active uh, debuff, um, which is by the way huge. You are nullifying the enemy leadership and you know debuffing their damage and armor, so it's easier for you to take them down. While it's much much harder for them to kill you because they lose a lot of HP or attack damage. So I'm gonna put them actually uh, above uh, Dragon Lords, but they're gonna be in the B list because they are very very expensive. And the last but not least is Grima, aka Warm Tongue guys, the last hero from Isengard. Hmm, I don't know what to say about this hero. Uh, I think he's like a troll hero, guys. Him like to Elven. <laughs> he is. He can be very nice in late game. He has an escape ability with level one. You can always scout your opponent and get away. The backstab can also deal decent amount of damage to the enemy heroes. Uh, the debuff though is very great. You nullify the leadership. But Isengard doesn't need that because you have always Kribin, which is gonna replace that ability completely. But if it's on cooldown, you can also debuff then afterwards with Grima. Uh, on the other side, he's very cost efficient, he's very cheap, so you can get him on the field fast enough. And for my for my boy Hisoka, because he will watch this video and he likes this dude a lot, we're gonna put him actually in the E list. Alright, guys. Uh, that's gonna be oh wait a second look he wants to be in the dealers himself <laughs> all right that's gonna be it for the hero tier list for rise of the witch king and let me know your opinions in the comment section below you can also i'm gonna share this link with you guys so you can also do your own tier list and share that with us in discord and thank you so much for watching i see you next time until then take care of yourselves and as always stay beyond standards peace guys